In the year 2000, Perón and Albertazzi, in a great video, introduced the Argentine flag sign. Up to now, there has been no explanation for the mechanism that justifies the appearance of this sign, nor has there been a technique to avoid this complication. Not that we dislike this flag, but here in Brazil we have tried really hard to avoid this unpleasant sign. First off, let's understand the white cataract. With the extreme aging of the lens, the cortex is hit by a process of hydrolysis and keeps on liquefying. That causes an increase of the pressure inside the lens, which leads to a pressure gradient between the inner part of it and the anterior chamber. Inside the lens itself, in the initial stage of hydrolysis, two pressure compartments are also created the anterior and the posterior. Because of the nucleus size, there is a liquid passage block in the equator. This is the equatorial block. In this stage, the cataract usually has a pearl-like white color, such as this one. And these are the cataracts that we should be afraid of. The cataracts that have got a continuous white color, like this one, have already suffered a long hydrolysis process, up to a point that they had a significant size decrease of their nuclei. These are the Morganian cataracts, whose example we see here. Due to the fact that the nucleus is much smaller than the diameter of the lens in these cataracts, there is no equatorial block and the liquid flows free inside the capsule. Because of that, it is easy to undo both anterior and posterior pressures. Notice the windmill sign which characterizes these Morganian cataracts. Whenever we see this sign, we can be certain that we have cleared the anterior intralenticular pressure as well as the posterior one. Notice also that there is a very clear space between the edge of the nucleus and the equator of the capsule. This space allows the liquid to move free inside the lens. Now pay close attention to these pearl-like white cataracts. When they do not have any liquid, such as this one, don't be afraid. You might as well treat them like any normal cataract with medium nuclear hardness. Whenever they have some liquid, it is often in small amounts, and that is exactly where we can be surprised by the Argentine flag sign. All of my flags appeared in this kind of cataract. Look, pearl-like with little liquid the Argentine flag. Pearl-like with little liquid. 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 Argentine flag. The usual features of all these cases are little liquid, very large nucleus, and equatorial block. Let's see the basic explanation to these cases. When we puncture the anterior capsule, we can easily clear the anterior intralenticular pressure. Because of its size, the nucleus pushes the equator of the capsular bag, stopping the posterior liquid flow ahead. As the anterior pressure has been neutralized, there is a pressure gradient between the posterior and anterior areas of the lens. The strength that pushes the nucleus upwards, causing the tearing of the anterior capsule, has been created. In this first case, we have punctured the capsule and have not done the posterior voiding. With the decrease of the pressure in the anterior chamber, as some visco exits the eye, the posterior pressure pushed the nucleus upwards, and when the opening picked up the zonular direction, the capsule teared. In this second case, the sucking of the interior liquid with the cannula caused a pressure decrease in the area just anterior to the nucleus. The posterior pressure pushed the nucleus upwards, and the flag appeared. 
These two last cases show us why we shouldn't do hydrodissection in these cataracts. The BSS solution injected under pressure goes backwards. As there is no return flow because of the equatorial block, it causes a posterior pressure increase that is strong enough to rupture the small rexes. So let's turn to the Brazilian solution for the Argentinian flag. There are two main difficulties for the prevention of the sign. One of them is to turn the anterior capsulotomy to a continuous one. We have to follow certain rules to be able to accomplish that. Rule number one is to always have the anterior chamber pressurized at the moment of the anterior capsule puncture. Rule number two is related to the aspiration of the liquid cortex. This can be done with BSS, but if it is done this way, we must always avoid surge of the anterior chamber. Actually, the ideal is to do the cleanup with the dispersive viscoelastic substance in order to avoid the anterior depressurization. Rule number three is related to the open increase of the anterior capsule. We should never let the capsular opening move towards the zonules. For that, we should use the technique that has been developed by the Brazilian Israel Rosenberg, the snail-like capsulorexis. This technique provides a very fragile flap which can easily be yanked in case an opening tends to go towards the periphery. With this technique, we can usually get a complete opening of the capsulorexis to 5 mm even without clearing the posterior part of the lens. The best bet is to do a small rexis of about 3.5 mm with the Rosenberg technique, like this one. And then enlarge it to 5 mm after having voided the liquid from the posterior part of the lens. Now look out because this posterior voiding is the greatest difficulty that we find in these pearl-like cataracts. And that is what we're going to talk about right now. In this example, take a look at the size of the nucleus. It squeezes the equator of the capsular bag. It is very difficult to mobilize it, and consequently it is not easy to do the posterior voiding. The extremely small rexis makes the procedure even more difficult. We have seen that we should not do the hydrodissection in these cataracts. The hint to perform the posterior voiding is to move the nucleus with the cannula while the BSS solution is only used to clean up the interior chamber. Look at the movements that we can use. Shoves, twists, and wobbles. But my favorite technique to do the posterior voiding is to use the bimanual irrigation aspiration technique. The irrigation keeps the anterior chamber pressurized. The aspiration keeps on cleaning the anterior cortex, while at the same time, the cannula is used to mobilize the nucleus, breaking the equatorial block and the posterior pressure. The complete technique is basically as follows puncture of the anterior capsule with the anterior chamber pressurized, clean up of the anterior liquid with a dispersive viscoelastic substance, snail-like small rexes, posterior voiding with IA cannulas, enlargement of the rexes to 5 mm now with no posterior pressure at all. From then on, go ahead with the FACO technique of your choice you have already conquered the white cataract. What about the historic rivalry between Brazil and Argentina? We'd better keep it in the soccer field. In all the other fields, we should stick together. If we can make it, we'll be able to accomplish amazing things.